Welcome to this video where we'll explore Hugging Face's Zero GPU offering and learn how to build simple, shareable machine learning applications with it. Let's start by understanding what Zero GPU is all about. It's closely tied to Hugging Face spaces, which are environments for creating and sharing machine learning apps. The main idea behind Zero GPU is to make expensive NVIDIA GPUs, like the high-end A100, more accessible and cost-effective. Here's how it works. Your space can use an A100 GPU for a short time, and when you're not using it, someone else's space can use the same GPU. This sharing system creates a multi-use efficiency, allowing multiple people to benefit from the same GPU resources. To see this concept in action, let's create a space. If you're curious about what others have done with Zero GPU, you can easily browse existing spaces on the Hugging Face website. There are many interesting projects to discover. Now let's focus on setting up our own space. While you might be tempted to use a template, we're going to start from scratch with a blank radio app. This approach will help us understand the process better. When setting up the hardware for your space, you'll want to choose the Zero GPU option. It's important to note that this feature is free for users with the Pro Plan. If you can't create a Zero GPU space, it's likely because you need to upgrade to a Pro account. As we create our space, keep in mind that you can make it either public or private. If you choose to make it public, be sure to handle any sensitive information or secrets securely. Let's begin by cloning our Zero GPU demo into our development environment. This will serve as our starting point. When we open the project, we'll see a readme file with some basic metadata and instructions for the space. However, to really tap into the power of the Zero GPU system, we need to create an app.py file. We'll start with a simple example using the provided code. Remember, it's crucial that your Gradio application's name matches what you specified in your README file. As we examine the code, there are two important things to highlight. First, we're using the spaces package. Second, we're using the GPU designation to indicate that we'll be using a zero GPU device. It's important to understand that this GPU functionality will only be available within functions that have the special function decorator. Now that we've set up our basic code, let's commit our changes and push them to our space. When you do this for the first time, you'll need to provide your username and an access token. To get this token, you'll need to go to your Hugging Face settings and create a new access token. For simplicity, we'll create a write token to use for pushing our code.
After pushing our code, we can return to our space profile and check the build and run processes. You'll notice that the build process is quite quick thanks to cached Docker layers. Once the build is complete, our application will start running. It's a good practice to keep an eye on the logs while running your demo. These logs will show you when you're using a CPU and when you're using the Zero GPU GPU. You'll see that outside of the special function we created, we're using a CPU, but inside that function, we have access to a CUDA GPU. Let's test our application by providing a number input. When we do this, we'll see that we successfully got temporary access to a GPU through the zero GPU allocation system. If you check the logs again, you'll see a message confirming that a CUDA GPU was used. Now, while it's exciting to see that we can access a GPU, you probably want to use this capability for more than just printing out GPU availability. So let's take our project a step further and create something more practical, like an LLM Senians checker. To do this, we'll use some additional Hugging Face libraries, specifically the Transformers library. We can remove our initial print statement and the zero variable, as we'll be setting everything up within our main function. In our updated code, we'll demonstrate how to use a Hugging Face token to access the Hugging Face hub. We'll set up our code to log in using a token stored as an environment variable. Then we'll set up a PyTorch device, specifically an NVIDIA GPU, and prepare a model and tokenizer. For our model, let's choose something interesting. How about we use the latest Gemma model from Google? We'll use the smaller 2 billion parameter version and explicitly push it to our CUDA device. Before we push this updated code, we need to set up the necessary token. Go back to your Hugging Face settings, create a new access token, and name it something like Gemma Token. Then, in your space settings, add this token as a secret. This way, your application can securely access it. Now that we've set up our token, let's push our updated application file. Remember, you'll need to use your push token again for this step. As we push our code, we encounter our first error. We need to create a requirements file to tell our application which packages it needs. Let's create this file and include both the Transformers and Hugging Face Hub libraries.
After fixing this, we encounter another error related to our gradio function. This is a normal part of the development process. It often takes a few tries to get everything working correctly. In this case, we might not actually need the input we initially set up, so let's remove it and focus just on the output. After making these changes, we push our code again. You'll notice that every time we push code, the build and run processes automatically restart. This ensures that our space is always running the most up-to-date version of our application. Now we're making progress. We can see an output in our space. To test it, we need to press the Generate button and see if we can get a successful run. However, we encounter yet another error. This time, it seems we need the OS package for handling environment variables. Let's address this issue and push our code once more. As we wait for the build to complete, it's worth mentioning that we're using an A100 GPU for this demo. However, don't worry about the excessive resource use. The GPU is only allocated temporarily when we run our generation task. Now that we fixed the OS important issue, we need to take care of one more thing. The model we're trying to use, the Gemma model, is what's known as a gated model. This means we need to accept certain terms and conditions before we can use it. Let's navigate to the model's GitHub repository to accept these terms. You'll see a license acknowledgement page. To gain access to the model, you'll need to fill out a form on Kaggle. Once you complete this form and are granted access, you'll see a success message. After gaining access to the model, we should be ready to go. We might not even need to rebuild our entire application. We can simply regenerate our output by clicking the Generate button again. And there we have it. We've successfully generated a response using our Gemma model on a zero GPU space. Remember, this is using an A100 GPU, but only temporarily during the generation phase. As usual, we'll include all code and diagrams in the video description. If you'd like to support the channel, consider a free trial of our new design tool linked in the description. We'll keep an eye on the comment section for any questions and want to thank you for watching. Please enjoy responsibly.